I'm an idiot by the name of Paul Mackey, and this here is my podcast for day eight of the dog days of podcasting, looking at that 80s show, episode five, My Dead Friend. I suppose at some point I should have mentioned Kyler Lee, who is possibly the most successful actor to come out of that 80s show. She went on, of course, to play Supergirl's adopted sister, Alex Danvers. Apparently, if you're a fan of Grey's Anatomy, you'd know she is also a series regular on that series. At the nightclub, we see the gang having fun, and we meet Rick. Hi, Rick. Rick lies down on the dance floor and dies. Bye, Rick. The gang is faced with the fact that they barely knew anything about Rick, not even his last name. Plus, Roger only knew him as Silverpants. So, Corey is then taken with wondering Tuesday's full name. There is also a subplot where Sophia tries to seduce Owen and Katie into a threesome, and a subplot where Margaret buys a box of used records off a poor guy who apparently sells to her on a regular basis. In the crate is a copy of the Beatles' Yesterday and Today, with an original rare butcher cover. I'm not sure how much it went for in 1984, but these days a near-mint version can go for about $25,000. Uh, The high point for me is that the main plot line was a strong, relatable plot that wasn't tied to a specific time in history. The low point, um, it's really the the, the subplots. Sophia is really becoming a one-note character. Seduce Katie. And uh, the uh, Beatles record subplot was okay, but it was still poor compared to that A plot. So, who won, who lost? I'm picking Roger as a loser out of the main cast. His single focus was finding Rick's cousin, the car dealer, who might have a job for him, and he never finds them. Is it an anachronism? You sell, you goes. Someone in the writer's room really slapped themselves on the back for this singer, and maybe passed it to a PA to check it out. And the facts appear simple. The Yugo is manufactured from 1980 to 2008. This show is set in 1984. That math checks out. However, the Yugo was marketed in the U.S. by a man called Martin Bricklin from 1985 until 1992, and therefore Roger can't sell them because they weren't around in the U.S. yet. So what worked? The primary storyline has little to do with the period setting. It's just a story about how well you may not know acquaintances. And that's possibly even more relevant these days than ever before, now that you can have acquaintances around the world who you've never met. Also, specifically, there was the one cocaine joke that was actually good so far. There's a line you don't want to cross when you're partying, and Rick snorted his. Why did it suck? Well, I think, uh... One joke was bad, the RT being called Likes Him Young in a callback to the earlier joke about everyone being known by a trait of theirs instead of their name. This gag was probably never appropriate, but it feels like it's aged particularly badly in the last 20 years. So the next episode is Spring Break 84. If you're already on the coast in a warm place, does spring break matter as much? Do all the San Diego students go to Tijuana to get away from the middle Americans traveling to San Diego? Does this show have the budget to depict Tijuana, and if so, how appropriative might it get? Since nobody in the cast is a current student, maybe there are guest stars playing Spring Breakers. Well, that's all for this episode, and I'm just going to say happy hunting! You have been listening to the One Idget's Thoughts on podcast, produced by Paul Mackey in association with Quadruplez.com. Theme music is Too Good by Jack Mangan and is used by permission from him. If you would like to hear other podcasts by me, you might try The Ghostlight Podcast, a completed intro cast about the TV series Slings and Arrows, or Idget Cast, an intro cast for the TV series Supernatural. Both can be found on fine podcasting listening software everywhere or at quadruplez.com.